Welcome. This video is going to take a closer look at using molar ratios to actually do stoichiometry. Remember, stoichiometry is just a funny word that means to use molar ratios to look at the relationship or quantities, amounts between reactants and products so you can do some predicting about what's going to happen. So it comes from two Greek words that mean element and measure, and that's really what we're doing is measuring the elements we start with to predict how much we'll have at the end, or looking at how much we need to produce and predicting how much we should start with. So stoichiometry requires that you have a balanced equation, that you select the right molar ratio to use, and that you be able to convert from grams to moles and moles to grams. And this is a big idea in chemistry. This is really doing chemistry. Um, you know, besides learning to write a correctly balanced equation, this is the next big milestone in chemistry is to actually understand what molar ratios are and how you convert between what an equation is telling you about the moles, the amount, and what we actually can measure in the lab, the grams or the mass. So let's look at an example here. If you're given the balanced equation, two potassium atoms plus two water molecules produce two formula units of potassium hydroxide plus one molecule of hydrogen gas, then if you started with 0 0.040 moles of potassium, you completely reacted it with excess water, so there's lots of water, how many moles of hydrogen gas will be produced? Well, we're really going to do this the same as we've approached any problem requiring converting or dimension analysis. We're going to write down what we have, 0 0.0400 moles of potassium, and now I'm going to ultimately want moles of hydrogen, and so I need to set up a molar ratio of what I want. I want to determine moles of hydrogen from what I have, moles of potassium. So when I look at my equation to get my molar ratio, I look at my coefficients and I see that hydrogen is just a 1 and potassium is a 2. So that means I should expect to form 0 0.0 to 0, 0 moles of hydrogen from 0 0.0400 0, 0 moles of potassium. Now, the second example is more like what we actually will see in the lab setting and most of the problems we do. Usually, we're measuring things in terms of grams. We don't have a device that can measure moles. We have devices that can measure volume or mass, and then we have to convert to moles because Molar amounts depend on what element you have, how heavy those elements are. So if instead I had 100 grams of water, and here's another thing I like to do. I like to write what I have up by the equation. How many grams of H2 would be produced? And then I like to write what I want up there. Now it's really easy for me to see what I have versus what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and write out my equation. I have 100 grams of water of water, yes, and I'm trying to get it to grams of H2. Well, if you look at our conversion factors, we don't have a way to convert right from H2O to H2. I have to convert this to moles first, so I'm going to have to go through a three-step process. This is going to have to become moles because then I can use it to predict my moles of H2, which I can then use to calculate my grams. So 100 grams of water, if I want to get the molar amount, I go back to my periodic table, I find hydrogen, find oxygen, remind myself that it's 18.02 grams per mole, grab my calculator, take 100 grams, and I see that I have 5.55 moles of H2O. Now most of you have a calculator where you can just keep uh, using your first answer so you really don't have to round off. It's most uh, accurate to go ahead and wait till the very end to do your rounding. So just carry your answer forward in your calculator but for our purposes I'll round this to 5.55. Now that I know I have 5.55 moles of H2O I can predict how many moles of H2 that should form because I can put what I want, H2, 
from what I have, H2O, and I see that that ratio is one to two. So I go ahead and take my 5.55 times one divided by two, and I come up with 2.77 moles of H2. And now to get that back to a mass amount, I take 2.77 moles of H2, and I find that there's 2.02 grams in one mole of H2, which means I should expect 5.60 grams of H2. So that's why chemists get paid the big money, is because everything you do in chemistry uh, pretty much involves you having to start out by converting things to moles, finding your answer, and then converting back to grams. It truly is like speaking a foreign language. You're constantly converting between the two systems. So here's my hints for stoichiometric calculations. First, you want to check and be sure you have a balanced equation. If the given amount isn't in moles, then you have to convert to grams, or you have to convert the grams to moles. Then you set up the molar ratio, always want over have. And then when you have your molar amount, if that's all they want, great, you're good. Otherwise, you need to convert that final answer back to grams. So step one and three are always going to be involved. You're always going to need the balanced equation. You're going to need a molar ratio. Whether or not you have to convert between moles and grams will depend on the individual questions. So here's a couple of examples for you to try. Propane, C3H8, reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. So I'm expecting that you can write a balanced equation for this, and then that you'll be able to go ahead and answer the two questions I've included here. One is uh, the simpler example of going from moles to predict moles, and then the second one, I want you to come up with the grams of oxygen. So go ahead and pause, see what you can do on this. And I'll go ahead and start putting my solution in here. So if you take a look here, I've written my balanced equation. It's going to take one molecule of propane plus five molecules of oxygen, and that will produce three molecules of carbon dioxide and four molecules of water. And in both questions, one and two, I'm starting with 10 moles of propane, and I'm being asked in question one, how many moles of CO2 will be produced? And in question two, I'm being asked how many grams of oxygen would be produced? So if we start with question number one, I have my balanced equation. I'm also starting with moles, so there's no need to convert that because molar ratios use moles. Just remember that it's a molar ratio, so that's your hint that everything has to be in moles. So I've got 10 moles of propane. I want to know how many moles of CO2 that would produce. So I set up my equation comparing moles of CO2 over moles of C3H8, and according to my equation, I should get three moles of CO2 from every one mole of propane. So I could expect 30 moles of CO2. And again, since it doesn't ask me to convert that to grams, there's no need for me to convert it. But in number two, my 10 moles of propane Again, I could set up my ratio of how much O2 I, or how much H2O I should get. So moles of H2O compared to moles of propane. And this ratio is going to be 4 to 1. So this is going to be 40 moles of H2O. But in this case, I am asked to convert that to grams. So now I go ahead and take my 40 moles of H2O. And I set up another ratio, but this time, instead of a molar ratio, I need my grams over moles. And I know one mole of water weighs 18.02 grams. So if I take 40 times 18.02, I could expect 720.8 or 721 grams of water. So here's another example for you to try. If you react five grams of hydrogen with an unlimited supply of oxygen, how many grams of water will you get? So for starters, I need my balanced equation. So go ahead and pause and see if you could come up with this balanced equation. 
Hydrogen and oxygen are both diatomic gases, being nonmetal. So H2 plus O2, water, I hope you all know, is H2O. And this one balances fairly easy. I need a two here for the oxygen, two here for the hydrogen. And so then if I write in what I have, I'm being told I have five grams of hydrogen. On limited supply of oxygen, I'm being asked to predict how many grams of water. So since I'm starting with grams and my final answer is supposed to be in grams, that's my hint that, first of all, this has to become moles. Get x moles of this. That will predict that I'll get y moles of this. And then I can predict z grams of H2O. So go ahead and pause, see what you can do here, and I'll start filling in my solution as well. So I gave myself a little more room to work here. My first task is to take, oh, get myself more room and then forgot to put my pen back on. My first task is to take this five grams of H2 and find out how many moles of H2 that is. So what I want is moles and what I know is that one mole of hydrogen weighs 2.02 grams. So this is really 2.48 moles of H2. If I have 2.48 moles of H2, I could set up a molar ratio of water to hydrogen, and I can expect a 2 to 2 or 1 to 1 ratio, so I could also expect 2.48 moles of water to be produced. And then finally, if I have 2.48 moles of water, I could change that to grams because 18.02 grams is the molar mass of one mole of water. So I could expect 44.6 grams of water. And that's stoichiometry. Pretty easy when somebody else is doing it.